In The Godfather, during an important meeting between Don Vito Corleone and the mysterious Virgil Solozzo, Sonny Corleone makes a catastrophic mistake, and thanks to their enemies, the entire Corleone family would have to pay the price. But what exactly did he do, and why was it so significant? Well, this is where understanding Law 4 of the 48 Laws of Power becomes essential. The Laws of Power state, when you're trying to impress people with words, the more you say, the more common you appear, and the less in control. Even if you're saying something now, it will seem original if you make it vague, open-ended, and sphinx-like. Powerful people impress and intimidate by saying less. The more you say, the more likely you are to say something foolish. In your own climb to power and success, this is a law you need to master. As you know, the higher up you get, the more ruthless and cutthroat the competition gets, and so having this law in your arsenal is vital. If you master this law, you will develop an aura of power and will seem more profound. This is not something that's reserved for the likes of Vito or Michael Corleone, but can be used by anyone in almost all areas of life. Even the famous artist Andy Warhol was known to have utilized this law to great effect. We will also provide you with everything you need to know to use this law in an ethical way. It will make you a better and more considerate person. Watch to the end to find out how. But once again, I have to warn you, using these laws is an art. It takes time and effort to master, and the danger comes when you don't understand when and how to use them. Therefore, it could completely backfire if you don't don't follow these principles, so listen closely so you don't end up like Sonny. Law 4. Always say less than necessary. Transgression of the Law in 1945, a mysterious figure had been trying to set up a meeting with Don Vito for a few weeks now. During this time, Tom Hagen had been investigating this man and provided the Don with a bit more information about this shadowy figure. This man was Virgil the Turk Solozzo. He was known as the top narcotics man, who gained this reputation thanks to his elaborate setups in both Turkey and Sicily which also allowed him to build some serious connections. At the time, some families were already working on this field. However, it was done on the low. No one wanted to be caught doing it, as it was outlawed by the commission. But it was so profitable that some took the risk anyway. But Solozzo was not looking to set up a small operation. He wanted to take it nationwide, including within the Corleone family's territories. He wanted to be the head supplier for the entire country. But for Don Vito and most of the other Dons, the drug trade was very taboo. It was seen as a filthy industry, and since they viewed themselves as men of honor, they didn't want anything to do with it. But besides all that, they understood that this trade came with a lot of risk. Up until now, they could easily bribe the officials to allow them to continue to operate their operations. But the drug trade is where they seemed to draw the line. Therefore, they would have to suffer the consequences. Maybe not now, but definitely in the years to come. Which is why Don Vito knew what his answer was going to be even before meeting with Solozzo. He still took the meeting out of respect but mainly to see what information he could extract from this Virgil Solozzo. A few days go by, and the time for the meeting has come. The Don listens attentively to the Turk's proposition, while also trying to extract as much information as possible. Solozzo then makes an offer that almost no one could refuse. Sonny shows interest, but the Don immediately shuts him up. The Don gives Solozzo his final answer and wishes him luck. Well, now it's final, and I wish to congratulate you on your business. I know you do very well. And Good luck to you. Not too long after, Vito was ambushed outside his headquarters and was now in a critical condition. Rumors of his death had become widespread. Now, we all know that this attack was directly correlated with the meeting Don Vito had earlier. So let's analyze what actually happened and who was to blame. Interpretation We've mentioned this before during meetings between powerful people. Every word counts. So pretty much every word and every glance was carefully dissected by the others in an attempt to uncover what they were really thinking. This meeting was no different, and Sonny gave Solozzo all the information he needed. But what was the big deal? All Sonny did was ask a simple question, a response to an offer Solozzo had made. Why was it so significant? While all that is somewhat true, Sonny, however, did a little bit more than just ask a question. You see, Solozzo was at this meeting to do anything possible to get the dumb on board. Vito was vital for this deal to go through. His answer would determine if the deal would succeed. So Solozzo tried to put the Don's mind at ease by stating that Vito's investment of $1 million, which by the way would be the equivalent of $15 million today, would be guaranteed by the Tatalia family, which means there would be zero risk for Vito. Solozzo was a very smart man. He knew that there was a high chance that the Don would refuse, so he went in with the goal to gather some vital intel that could be exploited later on, and Sonny gave him exactly what he was looking for. 
Let's look at how Vito instantly responded to hearing this offer compared to Sonny. So I received 30% for finance, political influence, and legal protection. That's what you're telling me. That's right. Why do you come to me? Why do I deserve this generosity? Oh, are you telling me that the Natalia's guarantee are investment? Wait a You see the difference? Instead of showing a united front, Sonny gave away the fact that the proposition was very enticing. However, Vito wanted to play it differently, but it was now too late. It showed a clear divide between the older and younger generation. And as you know, Solozzo would exploit this vital intel. He saw this as an opening, a crack within the seemingly unbreakable Corleone armor. This was the opportunity he needed to achieve his goal. And as we later find out, Solozzo was not only backed up by Philip Tattaglia, rather the head of the snake was the cunning Don Emilio Barzini, who he relayed this information to and helped Solozzo formulate this masterful plan. In their mind, if they could take out Don Vito, they would overwhelm the Corleone family to such an extent they would have no choice but to submit, make peace, accept the loss, and move on and then force Sonny to take this deal. So what should have Sonny done? Well, to start with, he should have kept quiet and left Don Vito to do all the talking. At least then, it would have been a lot harder for Solozzo to find out what they were thinking. Solozzo was clearly trying to bait them out, and with the help of Sonny, he definitely succeeded. Which is why the Don reminds Sonny, although too late, the importance of not letting your opponent know what you're thinking again. The fact that you should not be so open that you continuously say more than necessary. Vito was trying to explain to Sonny that a person who cannot control his words shows he cannot control himself and is unworthy of respect. And since Sonny was to be done one day, this is a lesson he needed to understand. But let's look at why Vito took this extremely seriously. Other than the reasons we mentioned earlier, Sonny was sabotaging Vito's efforts to find out what was really going on. He was very suspicious of Zolozzo and this deal in its entirety. He sensed there was something strange going on and needed to put Zolozzo at ease so he could buy enough time to find out what was really going on. But a combination of Sonny's outburst and the fact Don Barzini was already several moves ahead of Vito all led to this extremely well-laid-out plot, the perfect checkmate. So, although there's some blame that it should be attributed to Vito, the primary reason that emboldened Virgil Solozzo and led to one of the most elaborate plots in the history of the criminal underworld was because Sonny could not control his words and said more than necessary. Keys to power. The game of power is in many ways a game of appearances. So when you say less than necessary, like a Don Vito or even Michael, you inevitably appear more powerful than you are, which is one of the keys that establish their aura of power. But why is this the case? How does saying less than necessary give you any sort of advantage? Well, the laws of power break it down quite brilliantly. You see, your silence will make other people uncomfortable. Humans are machines of interpretation and explanation. They have to know what you're thinking. When you carefully control what you reveal, they cannot pierce your intentions or your meaning. History is littered with individuals who refuse to apply this law and pay the ultimate price. Your words are extremely powerful. They could either be used for you or just as easily used against you. It all depends on how you use them. When you reveal less than necessary, the silence and short answers puts them on the defensive. They will try to fill in the gaps you left, the intolerable silence with all sorts of comments that then reveals valuable information about them and their own weaknesses. After they leave the meeting with you, they will feel as though they've been robbed, now left to ponder your every word. And as the laws of power state, this extra attention to your every word will no doubt add to your power. A perfect example of this is Michael's meeting with Senator Geary, or even Vito's meeting with the commission. They both did not do the majority of the talking, only making a few comments throughout, as well as vaguely responding to their demands. But when they spoke, everyone listened. On the other hand, you not only cultivate a powerful appearance by saying less, but you also don't run the risk of saying something that you might later regret. You won't believe how common this is, not just today, but throughout history. Instead of just staying quiet and waiting for the right opportunity, therefore sacrificing the short-term satisfaction of responding for the sake of securing the long-term benefits. Here is the core of this law, the most important thing you need to take away from this law. Once the words are out, you cannot take them back. The law warns to be especially careful with sarcasm and to add to that, you should be cautious of any comments that could provoke or embarrass someone. The momentary satisfaction you'll gain will be outweighed by the price you'll have to pay. Observance of the Law 
During the reign of King Louis XIV, his ministers and advisors would spend days debating how to relate to him the different issues of the empire. They would be obsessed with the phrasing, trying to think of what would appeal to him and how he would interpret what they were saying. Even small details, such as what facial expressions, should have needed to be planned beforehand. Every detail needed to be accounted for. When the fateful moment would finally come, they would present to him the issues at hand, while he listened in silence, with an enigmatic look on his face that did not reveal any emotion. In the end, he would say, I shall see, and walk away. That would be the first and last time they would discuss the matter with the king. They only found out what he thought weeks later, when he had made the decision and put it into action. Interpretation at the height of his power, Louis XIV was known to be a man of few words. His most famous remark was, I am the state. He used his other signature phrase, I shall see, in all kinds of scenarios. Both these remarks are incredibly concise, yet extremely powerful. His own ministers and advisors would have no idea what he was thinking. The only information they could work off of was the actual result, the decision he ended up making. But other than that, they had no clue what the king's thoughts or intentions were. They could not decipher whether or not they had pleased or angered him until it was too late. And that was the point. It worked perfectly for Louis, as his court couldn't just tell him what he wanted to hear. They tried to find a pattern in his decision-making. But other than that, they were left in suspense, not knowing the result of what they said. He let them talk on and on, and the more they talked, the more they revealed about themselves. The silent Louis would keep this valuable information in mind, and later use it against them. But he was not always like this. As a younger man, he was literally quite the opposite. But through the years, he developed this mask to keep all those below him off balance and in fear. What's even more interesting is how Don Vito and Michael Corleone adopted this method and took it to a whole new level. In fact, the similarity between Michael and Louis XIV is actually quite remarkable. When Michael ascended to the rank of Don, he carefully managed who had access to him and what information they were allowed to hear. He compartmentalized each division of his empire so there would be few links between them, and he was always in the center. The only one who knew everything that was going on. It was quite a rigid structure to ensure no one other than him knew too much about what he was thinking or what he was saying. They would all report to Michael with any important information or issues at hand, but would need to wait after that until they received orders from the Don. Even Tom Hagen, Michael's consigliere, was not always sure what Michael was up to. Michael was also infamously a man of few words, especially when dealing with his opponents. This gave him an aura of power and made whatever he said seemed quite profound. Even Don Vito from the early days when he was trying to convince Don Fanucci to give him more time, he did not overplay it, rather carefully chose his words, giving him just enough information not to suspect him. Reversal even Michael Corleone, who infamously never revealed what he was thinking and always said less than necessary, understood that at times it is unwise to remain silent. Being vague and ambiguous can leave your words open to interpretation, which can be extremely risky. So sometimes saying more, being a bit louder, playing a fool can be advantageous. It could be as simple as analyzing the person's reactions to what you say, how they respond to your good or bad news. Things like analyzing micro-expressions can be extremely powerful, giving you a glimpse into what the other person is thinking, providing you with valuable information. The law also states that the more you talk, the less suspicious you appear, since it's harder to suspect you are hiding something. But once again, like all the laws of power, the difference between those who succeed and those who get wiped out is knowing when and how to use them. Real Life so how does this apply in your own life? And more importantly, how should you use it? Well, what's interesting about this law is that it can be a tool used in many different situations. Once you truly realize the power your words have and understand that once they're out, you can't take them back since the damage is already done, you are then in control and might just save yourself from making a catastrophic mistake. There's an endless list of situations in your own life where applying this law is vital. Again, this law should be used within the right context. Timing is everything and knowing when and how to apply these laws is an art when mastered can be extremely powerful. So to answer the question, it's a definite yes. Although this law is definitely more effective in competitive situations, particularly during a negotiation or business meeting, it can be used in your personal life since the thinking process is pretty much exactly the same. Here's how you do it. Next time, before you say something, ask yourself, is it necessary? How will they interpret what I'm saying? Is this going to give me momentary satisfaction and cost me heavily later on? Will this come back to bite? 
spite me? What could be the consequences? Of course, you won't always be able to predict the other person's reaction, but at least you become more aware of the more obvious potential consequences. And it should go without saying at this point, you should use these laws sparingly, only in the right context. You won't always have time to analyze what you're about to say, but being aware of the danger is good enough. With time and practice, it will become a lot easier. Remember this, saying less than necessary is not just for kings and powerful people. There are a lot more hidden secrets within this law that we want to share with you. If you're interested in learning a lot more of the secrets and wisdom that all the masters of the game of power have used to elevate their status and power and gain the knowledge that will help you in your own journey, I highly recommend subscribing to our new weekly newsletter, where we'll be sharing the same priceless insights that will help you no matter what your goal is. It will focus on the things we constantly discuss on this channel. Respect, power, and wealth. Keys that are not openly discussed, which means they will get you ahead of your competition in no time. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.